Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnitus, me to Katie Douglas, about season two of Ginny and Georgia dropping worldwide on Netflix January 5th. Welcome back to the show. It's so good to see you again. Hey, thank you so much for having me back and wanting to talk to me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's pretty crazy, right? It got, gets kind of renewed for season two and like the whole world's basically waiting and waiting and they don't have to wait anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, it's such a different feeling from the last time it came out. I feel like we didn't, like it obviously exceeded everybody's expectations the last time and we weren't really expecting it to have the reaction that it did. But this time we're aware that we have this falling and we're just kind of like, all right, let's get down to it. So, yeah, well, I think I think it's a combination of the fact that season one, you're introducing these characters, you're fleshing them out. And then season two, it's kind of like we feel like we know these characters a little bit. So it's just like continuing that. But also like a lot of stuff happened in the end of season one. Right. So it's kind of like, all right, we've got to pick up back where we left off. <laughs> yeah, and it does, too. The show actually does pick it picks up right where we left off. And as I'm sure the fans know it was like rather explosive and it was quite the uh, cliffhanger. So yeah. we're right in the heat of it all last time you were on the show we we talked like a little bit about Jenny and George but it was mostly about your film The Walk but yeah. I mean this is a big season for Abby and I'll, and, and the reason I think that is because there's a lot like it, it really kind of showcases in many ways that Abby is trying to change and she's doing a lot of self-reflection and she is trying to be as good as a friend as she is you see that this season but there's also things that like she's dealing with personally as well. So like when you read the script, did you notice that kind of like ping pong match push and pull with like Abby trying to be a good friend, but also taking care of herself as well? Yeah, of course I did. Well, yeah. I feel like um, the great thing about the script is that it's actually quite representative of how, of what it, of what it's like to be a teenage yep. girl. And I'm sure a lot of people would agree. Nobody is who they want to be when they're in high school. So um Abby, Abby's dealing thing, dealing with things the way that Abby's dealing with things, which yes. is I, I. A lot of people love the character because she's very, very flawed and not perfect. And um, I, I, in season two, I definitely kind of wanted to see her come into her own a little bit more and find something special about herself. Yep. And and you know, obviously not anything sweet or amazing, but just all her. Like, um, so I, I think you'll see a lot of of that character development and i hope people can connect to it the same way they did last time did you enjoy all like the, the comments and theories about like the kind of villain kind of label with abby in season one but like a lot of people also come into her defense saying like no it's misunderstood was it cool seeing that online oh yeah absolutely i think that's the point is that type of discussion i mean she's written one way and i obviously like played it however I saw it, but the fact that people are reacting to it and can either, both like relate to her and also just like they see someone else in her that they hate and like that's so the character it's so much fun and I'm I'm just so glad that she's reading that way. For sure. I've spoken to your other cast members about this, and I know that when you were greenlit for season two, you went back and you were filming during the pandemic. So there was a feeling where there was a lot of PPE and a lot of social distancing and COVID testing and everything. Besides that fact, though, what was it like kind of getting back to work, seeing everyone and kind of picking up where you left off? It was just like really nice to be doing it. Like, of course, the situation was not ideal, but the fact that we were doing it is like we are so very lucky and we're so very privileged. And I'm um, I, I think more than ever, people like I mean, the world was introduced to the show during a really hard time. And the fact that we can pick up now. Um, as we're, as the world's kind of obviously still in a hard time, but putting the pieces back together, I, I think it'll really give, um, I, I think we're just lucky to be able to like be there for people through all of this the same way we were then. So um, to answer your question, it was so much fun being back on set. I think you'll probably hear this a lot. We have like the coolest, nicest people, literally like no drama, which is never what anyone wants to hear, but like it's, it's a family. So it was, it was it was really nice to be back. When in season one would you say you started to understand Abby? Because I feel like the answer to this question depends on the project or the film or the movie. Because you might kind of... Because they're growing, like you kind of said, right? And like people can adapt yeah. to Abby and everything. But like 
Are you still learning a lot about Abby? Do you think you had a grasp of her after season one and then you kind of picked up? Like, I'm just curious about that mindset in terms of really understanding this character. Oh, of course. Yeah. I think um, going into the role, I actually, when I was reading the audition scenes, I kind of saw somebody else that I knew in her. I saw her in somebody else I knew. And in a way, I was like imitating this like real person in my life. Um, <laughs> But then, uh, obviously, as the scripts developed, you get things get really personal, and you start to learn about like what they're struggling with. Um, and I think then I started to understand her more and more, just based on obviously like personal reasons. Um, and I guess like as the scripts keep rolling out, and as the wonderful writers keep like inventing for her, I I kind of get an under like more more than anything, I get an understanding of just like she has a sense of self, and she sticks to it. And um, she's not ashamed of herself. She loves herself in a lot of ways and uh, and hates herself and more. And I just, like, I, I think at the core of it, she just kind of graces through um, this hellhole that is high school with yeah. a sense of humor and uh, with, like, a great, like, a, like, a, a I'm, I'm, a, the euphemism is escaping me, um, but just, like, a sense of self and a sense of humor. Yeah. And I just a, but I just think a... I think especially in the first couple of episodes, like it's not really like it, it's not this is not a spoiler, but like again, this is gonna come out a couple of days after people have had a chance to see seasons two. But I think she knows she's messed up in a lot of ways. Oh, for sure. You know for what sure. I mean? She, <laughs> yeah, which it was just uh, that's kind of the one thing I wanted to make sure that we didn't. Uh, um, I know for for the people who who say that they really relate to the character, I kind of felt the responsibility to to represent um how okay it is like to be on your own and it's okay to be um a mess and like it's also you're you are okay like you're whoever you are and whatever you're dealing with that's cool just brush it off with a sense of humor and and I don't know I, I just think uh I I see a lot of myself in her more and more I didn't at first yeah. but Oh, you really? Want- she's really flushed out in season two. Like it's an unbelievable <laughs> arc in season two, and you do such an amazing job. Um, oh, okay. I do want to ask again. I'm not going to go into context, but what is talked about? But in season two, like season one, there are a lot of these like hangouts, right, with all the friends, kind of in people's basements, and there might or might not be a band playing, and there's like these conversations they're having and this small talk and this like drama and like jokes and everything when you're kind of like doing those scenes with everyone with like Sarah, Chelsea, Antonio, like, are you talking about like the fact that, wow, like we really kind of want to make these scenes authentic so that people watching are like, wow, like that's how me and our, my friends chat and everything. Like, do you ever think about that with the cast or talk about that with the cast at all? Totally. Yeah. 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 I feel like when we're all in that room together, it, we all just become inventors. Like we're, we're throwing, I feel like a lot of the scenes that you see with all of us there, uh, most of it is, is us coming up with stuff on the spot or That's just awesome. trying to make yeah. it feel um, fun and kind of channel that, that same familiarity that the first season had. Mm-hmm. But um, yes, we are v- like very collaborative and very inventive in the moment. And we're also just kind of goofy together in general. So yeah. <laughs> when, have did you officially realize the global impact of Netflix and the Netflix fandom and the Netflix family? Was it like a couple of episodes after season one, kind of like or like uh, when season one drops? You know, everyone's watching it. So sorry, not a couple of episodes, a couple of weeks after se- season one drops. I would make an argument that we're seeing the impact a lot more now because of the demand that every day, like can't wait for season two, can't wait for season two. Is it starting to hit you more now? How unbelievably global the Jenny and Georgia fan base is. Yeah, yeah, I think it was, I think it was season one, uh, really very quickly after I think season one dropped when okay. I started to realize, um, and for whatever reason, the path that I kind of chose to take was to, it got a little overwhelming, so I put the phone away for a bit, and I like just stayed off the app for a little bit. But then, as I was walking around, I was running into people who already knew who I was, and it was, it was, just, it was. I I just couldn't believe how many people it was, and I've never talked to so many like sixteen year old girls before in my life who have just been so like lovely and and who had nothing but like good things to say about the work that we did. It was, yeah. it was crazy. So I think I think it. 
I, I heard it from the people on the street, <laughs> to be honest with you. No, absolutely. A lot of elements at play in season two of Jenny and Georgia, dropping on Netflix Worldwide January 5th. Family and friendship, I feel like, is always going to be there. There's emotions, there's heartbreak, there's a lot of really intense drama, which is sometimes not very easy to watch this season. Reading the script and going and filming this, and then like until you wrap, basically, what were elements that really stood out to you specifically with season two of Ginny and Georgia, based on kind of what I talked about just now or mentioned, or others I haven't talked about? What was an element that really stood out to you, Katie? Uh, probably some of the subject matter that we deal with, um, which it, in season two, it absolutely does get a lot heavier. Um, that being said, I think that representation in art and storytelling is such an important form of reflection on humanity. And um, I just, I just don't think there would be any point to it all if we didn't, if we didn't, if we, if it was all senseless and we just didn't dig into these like honest and important stories. So I just think the more that we talk about this stuff and the more that we see it, um, not only can we just gain a little bit of compassion for each other, but we can empower ourselves that way. And I, I thought this season just hit that, like right on head and I, I really hope that it resonates with people, especially after this kind of lonely year. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. We're starting 2023 off with Ginny and Jordan pretty much, if you think That's about right. it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. so crazy. Look. Four days into the new year, we get a new season. I think it's going to be insane. Um, yeah, I hope. Yeah, are you starting? Is it starting to sink in that it's coming out soon? Like, I mean, it's one of those things you go, you work on other projects, you don't really think about it, but it's like coming up pretty soon. It is coming. You know what? We were just out in LA doing um, some some prep, some press stuff for season yeah. two, and I think, like I said earlier, it's like it's a totally different feeling now that season two is coming up. We're almost more excited about it. Mm -hmm. I know it is so crazy. You worked on a show called Pretty Hard Cases. Mm -hmm. And you worked on that show with Percy Hines White. Yeah. Who's in Wednesday on Netflix. You're on Ginny yeah. and Georgia on Netflix. Have you had a chance to like think about that or talk about the fact that you're both like on Netflix shows right now? And like, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, it's okay. We never thought that we would both end up like working for Netflix. But it's, it's so funny. And like, we're just like so like proud of each other and support. Like, we were kind of uh, got to experience the filming process for each. And it's just, it's, it's so cool to all be able to like work at the same place. It's the Toronto kind of the, Tor cause a lot of things sh like from Netflix or other networks shoot in Toronto. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize that still these days. Yeah. Like there's a lot of things that shoot in Toronto and there is, yeah, it's a very, it's a very tight circle of the Toronto actors, right? I feel like people don't realize that. Like everyone, at least uh, everyone's at least like even crossed paths with each other one time. Oh, too. Everyone we're all kind of like known each other since we were kids too. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's super crazy. Cause I went, I went to, I'm, I'm originally from uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I went to school with a lot of actors that were in Montreal, but like moved to oh. Toronto. So like Jesse Camacho is on lock and key on Netflix is like yeah. one of my very good friends, guys like that. But yeah, it's just like you talk to them. And it's like, oh yeah, I know this person. Oh yeah, I met this person once. It's like, yeah, you can't it's stump like, someone. <laughs> I know, and it feels like everyone's that you were friends with just like is killing it right now too, and or, or just like doing well. It means I don't know. It makes you feel like you're 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 making the right friends. I don't. And, it's it's been so cool to see everybody just like yeah. kill it. What is it like being part of the Netflix family specifically? I didn't ask you that yet, but like specifically the Netflix component of things. I mean, it's incredible. Like the global effect that that net that streaming service has blows my mind how quick it is it's it, it's insane to me like really it truly is it's super chill it's like super <laughs> chill <laughs> i'm like giving you this big pep like pep talk i'm like hi sucking you out being like this is insane this is crazy yeah, and you're I like it's chill <laughs> crazy out there it's not it's super chill we're all like everyone is super like we don't have any idiots that we deal with like we're just it's super in my experience it's been super lovely super chill the fans that i meet are just like like i think about them every day <laughs> i think about you every day no but i do like, I, like their words have been like so so encouraging so i i've had nothing but a, a super chill experience yeah. How many inside jokes or funny things on set happened the first couple of weeks of filming season two of Ginny and Georgia? If you oh. give an estimate, like over a hundred? 
I would say between like the different groups of fr- like probably over a hundred. We have Is there the same any, t- anything that kind of stood out that's cool and funny that you could share with us before we wrap up on top um, of your head? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I feel like um, we had a saying um, we would basically kind of say like what happens in the green room stays in the green room. Mm-hmm. Just like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But mm-hmm. um, I feel like for the sake of just entertaining the people, we can break that rule. Every once in a while. Oh my god! I, I don't want to get in trouble with the no, G- Castle of Georgia. Here's the thing: is this I is not the green to... room, though. Are we okay to do this? <laughs> they're way, they're too funny to be taken seriously. <laughs> okay. Um, my my one. I just remember I we had a really good time. Um, my castmate Chelsea Clark, mm-hmm. um, love her. Uh, got really inventive with one of those wheelie tool things that they used to carry the lights, like a wheelie stand thing. Mm-hmm. And she would give a lot of our castmates like rides around the green room and that thing. And like, obviously there were some casualties. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Shout out to Chelsea Clark. Shout out to the whole Ezra crew. Ezra on Out TV. Shout out to Lukachi. Great people. Oh yeah. (laughs) The squad, right? We got to shout out the squad, right? We have to. Yeah. No, they're killing it. (laughs) It's so (laughs) awesome. Uh, Katie, so great catching up with you. Thank you for joining me back on Popternative. Thanks so much for talking to me. Um, Had a great time. Yeah. So season two, January 5th, craziness. It's chill, like you said. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> was, I still, I'm going to go back and play back. That was like the greatest moment because I'm like getting really into it. And then you're kind of like, calm down. It's chill. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> uh, your Instagram account, is it just your name, Katie Douglas? I think it's Katie Douglas 98. Yep. Oh my God. Okay. Number. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Cool. They can check that out. Well, this has been Pop Turner at youtube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Be sure to catch Katie Douglas as Abby in season two of Jenny and Georgia streaming worldwide on Netflix January 5th. Until next time, this is Katie and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.